Hello, hello. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to see you today. My name is Dustin Cormier. Welcome to How to Rock Astrology. To all those of you watching live, feel free to make a comment, ask a question. Today's episode, uh, for those who are just tuning in, we are talking about Pluto through the houses. This episode is talking about Pluto in the third house. Thank you for joining. Uh, we've been, this is a continuation in our sort of like an audiobook series that I'm kind of doing here. Uh, but if you're watching and you just want the goods on Pluto in the third house, feel free to watch it now. With, you don't need the context of the rest of the series. But if you get a lot out of this reading, you might get, you, you might want to check out my Pluto in the houses video. It's like one of the first videos just before the Pluto in the Houses series. Gives you a little bit more uh, inkling into how to translate Pluto in all the houses. Uh, we've been talking specifically about Pluto as a very much a uh, being involved in reincarnating past lives and in karma. Uh, you can say what you want about this. It, some people take it as a metaphor for simply unconscious re- Pack constantly, periodically returning neurological impulses that are stored in the deepest vats and reservoirs of our continuing strand of genetic data, whether that's from coming from our parents uh, and our ancestors, or whether that is coming from some trans-dimensional self in another universe. You know, all the fun mythical, mystical astrology stuff. In any case. Pluto's energy does relate to this reservoir of unconscious complexes in the psyche that's been building up through lifetimes. And we need these attachments. We need basically to use these attachments to run us into a wall in this incarnation so that we can get a hold of it and say, wow, I really didn't have control of what I just did. And that's how we get control of it. It's this bestial thing that we all got to do. And it's kind of, this is literally kind of emphasized in Pluto in the third house. The third house relates to uh, aggression, exploration. Uh, in Vedic astrology, we consider that each house is ruled by certain planets. And the third house is, the, Mars is the karaka of the third house. Mars is the planet that expresses a deep part of the nature of the third so there's an aggression that can come through here, a desire to express and communicate what one is at the present. And everyone sees this person talking blah, 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 blah about how they are. And the unconscious babbling of the expression of the pain and the feeling in the present state of reality, people can often read what the person wants to be because this person is going to Go like almost gossip and just leak just bleh. Pluto is escaping their mouths without them even realizing it and Pluto's opposite pole in the ninth house is trying to unfold through this person's constant chatter it's like the person grips their present reality through this constant chatter and talking and sensationalizing and talking with people about this is my reality this is my reality this is my reality and when it comes time for some kind of transformational process through Pluto, through another trans planet hitting this house, or the lord of this house, you know, if Pluto's in the third house for a Leo rising, that means it's going to be in the sign typically of Libra uh, in the equal house sort of system, uh, in the equal sign system. So for a Leo, Pluto in the third house coming through Libra if we have any influences engaging Venus for a person like that, if Uranus is transiting Venus, or if they go through a Venus Mahadasha in the traditional, in the Indian sense, or if any planet is transiting Venus, they might feel some shakeup, some under influence coming from the Pluto in the third house. Uh, and it will cause them to just grip in the Libra, in the case of Pluto and Libra in the third house, they'll grip their reality through relationships that keep them where they are. And they might come to find that those relationships are drain your your relationships are draining you, and that you now want to 
extract, you, you want to employ the seventh house from your Pluto, which is the ninth house, which in this case would be Aries. Uh, and that would be a, a whole different thing. So, you know, the point is, is A, consider that the ninth house, since the third is opposite from the ninth, Pluto's opposite pole is ob always the goal of the incarnational uh, past life data and the grip of the person trying to hold on to their present reality through their immediate experience. Someone can be living in their immediate, like, you know, a, a movie like The Matrix is a perfect ball-breaking ball transformative experience for someone with Pluto in the third house. Because, for example, there's that one scene where the guy is caught in the Matrix and he's eating a steak and he's like, I don't care if this isn't the true reality. What matters is my senses. What matters is that my experience now feels like it's I'm enjoying myself and this is, all, this is the only reality I need to perceive. And I've got my steak and it's so delicious and it's so good and I just don't need to experience anything outside of this little bubble shell. And because he does that, he screws over the people who are outside the matrix, the true reality, the burgeoning transcendental reality. And what might happen is that, you know, you might think that you're perfectly okay in your own little limited sphere of conception and you've conceptualized your universe and who you need to be, who you want to be, and you're constantly communicating it. And something is going to come along and make you question the deeper meaning of who you are, who you ought to be what all of this ch constant chatter is for, and this aggressive seeking for answers for who you are right now. You're going to be forced into experiences that take you way out of your own psycho, your mental grip, through philosophy, through experiences that are way different. Ninth house, Sagittarius, the globe trotter. So I, that's a, that was a long spiel. I shouldn't do too long of a spiel for each one of these things, but. Uh, uh, we're going to start talking about Pluto in the third house now. This is Astrology, Karma, and Transformation by Stephen Arroyo. And he notes that these sections provide hints and guidelines for interpreting the mean of, meaning of Pluto in the various houses, in this case, in the third house. Please keep in mind that these are only guidelines and are meant primarily to elicit insights in your own mind related to the person whose chart is being examined whether it's your own, whoever's got Pluto in the third that you're examining. How positively or negatively the various potentials are being expressed is up to you to judge. What this is saying is that you need to use your own astrological knowledge to define whether this Pluto is afflicted because Pluto in any house is not good or bad. Pluto is not good or bad necessarily in the third house. If Pluto's Third, if Pluto is in the third, if it's got good aspects from benefic planets like Venus or the, the, a benefic moon or Mercury, uh, if it's got a, tr a trine to Jupiter, excuse me, uh, if it is in the sign of a, if it's despos, oh, excuse me, if Pluto's dispositor, the ruler of its sign is healthy and has positive aspects and is in a, if they're in a, if it's in a healthy house, these are the kind of things that give the Pluto energy positive experiences to which, which to express this constant communication and even to experience outside of one's personal conception, to experiment with new ways of thinking, uh, new cultures, with talking to people you'd never typically talk to. And these sort of things, sorts of things could be a, a safe way to express Pluto's energy in a constructive way that's not too damaging to the soul. So look to the Lord of Pluto's house and aspects to Pluto to define whether these qualities will come through positively or negatively. This is Pluto in the Third House by Stephen Arroyo. Pluto in this house indicates a person who is compulsively thorough in all matters of communication. This person wants to be absolutely sure that ideas are being clearly transmitted. This can manifest as a rather irritable way of speaking with others, or it can be transformed into a creative ability to get to the depths of human interaction. A 
creative ability to get to the depths of person-to-person -person communication, being witty, saying things that are off, like abstract, and often very deep, just off the cuff, where people just in communicating, like, gosh, I never, know, I never knew I could be so honest with some. I've never met someone so honest. Uh, even edgy and taboo-breaking, but, you know, if a person's, again, if your Pluto's well-placed, it won't be that disruptive. It'll be disruptive to other people, but you could be an active shaman for the Pluto seeking to come through everybody if you do it positively, if Pluto's, if your third lord is positively placed, etc. If not, it can come, you can come through as irritable because you don't, you have a forceful, willful, vindictive way of communicating with people. People with Pluto here may also have great energies, which they can direct out their hands in healing work. And they often are naturally talented in all forms of research. Researching about your per personal ideas, philosophies, or just field of interest. Pluto in the third house gives a grip, a desire to do that. So, that was Pluto in the third house through Stephen Arroyo's Car Astrology, Karma, and Transformation. Now, as a little extra, I've decided for each of these videos to add in Astrology, A Cosmic Science by Isabel M. Hickey. She, uh, this book was put out about like 1994, I believe, around the same time. The, yeah, the most recent version was released in 1992, although the original was much earlier. Same thing with Arroyo's book. Uh, she's a well-respected Western philosopher who is an intuitive channel for Pluto's descriptions throughout all the houses, and uh, as well as lots of things. This book is a classic one. I got this off of Jimmy Page, who was who I heard recommend this particular book. Uh... So we are going to be talking about Pluto in the third house. And remember that it's not necessarily, like Pluto's not inherently bad in any house. This will bring an aggressive, sensational, compulsive desire to constantly engage in stimulation and information and even an aggressive, unconscious way of not being aware of one's how one's coming off and one's behavior. This will do this no matter what, but eventually if Pluto's well-placed, again, and so is its lord, and especially the Mercury of the person and the Mars will help them gain a discipline and control so they can channel this energy in a competitive way without looking like too much of a someone who's just cramming their own data obnoxiously down everyone's throat all the time. Uh, Isabel Hickey describes the mythos of Pluto through Pluto being its own position and Minerva being the opposite pole. How do you best integrate the polarity of Pluto's position with its seventh house position? Minerva is the transmutation of the type of a person being tired of the stagnant energy and now coming forth into a transformational evolutionary state and using that energy constructively. And when that's the case, Isabel Hickey says that Minerva is working through Pluto. It's like the Greek mythos, Minerva. Pluto in the Third House by Isabel Hickey. Planets in this cadent house affect the individual through the mind and the nervous system. Pluto in this house does not bring the drastic outer events into the life as it does in an angular house. It works in a hidden and more subtle way. It's kind of in the unconscious. The backdrop of this house is Mercury, natural ruler of the third house, and Saturn ruling Capricorn, the third sign from Scorpio. It's an interesting Western interpretation of the third house in particular. There will be caution, seriousness, and depth to the mind. At times, a tendency toward depression and negative thinking has to be overcome. The aspects between Pluto, Saturn, and Mercury will be very important 
for they will indicate whether this energy will be used positively or negatively. I would also mention as well as the other factors that are carrying the Pluto energy, including the third house lord and its health and state. This position of Pluto can be used to probe the secrets of the universe or be used to uncover secrets of a more personal nature for oneself or also between other people, snooping around in other people's business, for better or worse. Sometimes a secret agent is necessary. The individual could be a good researcher in medicine or a geologist dealing with the earth. Metallurgy would be a vocation with, a, with, a, with an appeal. If Mars is highlighted in the chart, there will be an ability in police work or as a private investigator. Yeah, that makes sense. There can be great turmoil in the mind, and if it is suppressed, the results will not be good. If difficulties cannot be talked out with a confidant, uh, with a confidant then they must be expressed either through writing or painting or something, whatever you have to do to get out the unconscious compulsions of your sub subliminal unconscious. Often painting or writing out one's feelings can act as safety valves and save the nervous system from too much pressure. Because this is a person for whom the er nervous agitated energy to act constantly and habitually can build up and it needs valves of just bleh, mindless letting go, ninth house type of Zen Sagittarian letting go experiences. After the thoughts and feelings have been expressed, either through color or writing, they should be destroyed. Elim elimination of what has been expressed provides a mental catharsis and the health will not suffer. If the person doesn't do this kind of thing, they'll hold, they could hold on to their writings. Uh, they have to be willing to act, behave, and let it go, surrender it, sacrifice it, and to still act, to open to the flow of action that their life is opening themselves to. Find a way to do that so that you're not just a bottled up bottle of potential that's going to hurt its liver just because it's clenching its stomach so much with anticipation to act but not acting. In the early home life, there may be unusual conditions where relationships with brothers and sisters are concerned. Third house is the house of siblings and co-borns. How this will operate has to be judged by the aspects to this house from the rest of the chart. The Minerva aspect of Pluto in this house would illuminate the mind, and the individual could be a teacher of spiritual law and bring light to others. Little escapes the awareness of persons with a third house Pluto. They are able to evaluate situations and people with great accuracy. For that reason, these people can make great counselors and psychologists, having a deep intuitive sense of just how one's own deepest subliminal reactions and impulses work, experimenting and researching and exploring it through one's own body and experience, researching about what I experience through my own body, and then seeing the archetypal principles of the human psychology's behavior. This is like Mercury. Mercury is the nervous system, just how human behavior works, psychology. And this person could research the psychological dimensions of all these behaviors in themselves that they experience and express unconsciously through Pluto in the third, just blah, here's me behaving. Then they research what they see objectively and detachedly and then they can categorize it in other people in a very profound way so that they can be a good eye for how someone's going to act. It's just that, of course, you don't want to become too judgmentally locked up in your perception of people because you could be putting people in boxes that aren't really there. 
I recommend do what you got to do with this whole classification thing. If it's your bag, if you're a private investigator, if you're anybody who works with psychology in that way, just watch how you do it to your personal relationships. You know, use this conception of yours to interact with people in the way that you feel is works. But at some point in relationships, especially important relationships with your mother, father, sisters, co-borns, and lover. You have to give into the faith, the Sagittarian hope and faith that they can unfurl their own best self from within themselves so that you're not just living their lives for them. You know, overanalyzing them and telling them how they ought to be. You got to let them do it. And then give them advice based on what you see and then let it go. Only give them as much as they feel they can or need to hear and then let it go. If you have a good... Pluto here and good third lord then you'll know this anyway and a good Mercury right hope you guys enjoyed that I'm Dustin Cormier for Outer Rock Astrology this has been Pluto in the third house uh, I'm going to eventually talk more uh, I eventually want to do a reading on Jeffrey Wolf Green's whole take on all of these Pluto placements but for now this is a good primer uh, so check out the earlier part of this series to learn a bit more. If you enjoyed this, uh, more conversations about this way of Pluto and dealing with it, you can check it out at the early part of the series and watch till the end if you feel like it, because at the end we're going to talk about planetary aspects to Pluto. Thanks for watching, folks. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next thing that I 